Hey crafty friends, Anat Kessler here with Saturday Extravaganza, and today I am creating a steampunk hot air balloon. Um, I have here a plastic ornament and basically you can also use a glass ornament and I'm going to place it on this tape roll just for um, sta stable base and what I'm going to do is cut I have a gold duct tape and you can also use silver if you want but I find gold to be more impressive and what you can do is or what you should do is um, cut the tape to strips and cover the entire ball all around and when you cover it, just place your tape um, slightly overlapping and in sort of um, a pattern that will resemble patches or even a quilt, you can say. Because you know that hot air balloons are basically made of fabric. So what we're going to do is mimic the look of fabric course this is a steampunk hot air balloon so it's going to look like metal but you get the point right so you keep on covering the entire um, plastic ball or glass ball if you use a glass ball be careful and don't be afraid to have those little wrinkles because that just adds to the realistic look of the fabric and that will help you in the next step that we're gonna do so basically my ball is completely covered now as you can see and what I'm gonna do next is paint it with black acrylic paint now you just take a foam brush find it to be easier and has no uh, strokes showing and basically just paint the entire ball it can be a little bit messy because you need to hold the ball and then your fingers get a little black from the paint but it's fine I'm just placing it again on my um, foam my tape roll as a base and it's okay if not entirely every single point is covered let it dry for maybe 30 seconds, 45 seconds, and then take a paper towel and just remove the paint. Now what you'll get is a blackened sort of duct tape, which will look like metal that has been um, oxidized a little and dirty got dirty a little and it will not be so shiny anymore because some of the black paint will still be on the duct tape especially on those little ridges and valleys and um, lines so as you can see you get a really cool effect and slightly dirty hands but we can wash it right so this is how it looks now after it's dry and what I'm going to do next is work on my basket now I have here um, a old box that I have found it in my stash and what I'm going to do is paint all the edges and corners with black acrylic paint from the inside and the outside because what I'm going to do is cover all the panels, all the sides and the bottom on the inside of the box with pattern paper. So I don't want any of the purple to show and 
doesn't matter how accurately you cut your paper it never covers every single uh, corner or line and I don't want any purple because this box is purple I don't want it to show so what I'm doing is cover all those spots that might show with the black acrylic paint and this would also make my life easier when I cut the paper because I wouldn't be wouldn't have to be entirely accurate because I will have that black frame around um, to a sort of a secure security uh, perimeter so to speak so you see I have a strip here and I cut it to size and then when I glue it down on the side you'll see the little black um, edges showing sort of a frame around the paper so that looks really cool so just add all the papers on the outside and also on the inside of the box and the most important thing to remember is that you also need to cover not only the inside but also the bottom part of the box because the this is a hot air balloon and if you're gonna hang it then the bottom is going to show it's not going to be placed on something right so if the bottom is going to show you want to cover it as well I'm going to hang it somewhere so obviously it will show so I'm just measuring the bottom and I'm basically cutting it to size more or less I'm using Tim Holtz paper that looks like a weaving weaved fabric of some sort like like a sort of a basket almost so that's really cool it's really hard to see the pattern but I you can take my word for it don't even remember which collection it is because all the papers that I had by Tim Holtz are all jumbled up together and sometimes they fall from the stack so I don't even know which one it is so I'm sorry about that um, so you see this is the bottom and the inside as well so the entire box is covered now of course we can't leave it like this we want to give it a steampunk look and we also need to create the um, mechanism that will tie it to the balloon right so what I have here is a chain and I ran out of jump rings so I'm going to find a way to do it differently and what we need to do is create four holes I'm using my crop dial and I'm going to punch four holes two on each side and then I'll connect the chain to the box or the basket and then the chains on the other end will be connected to a wire circle that I'll show you next and that will sit on the ball and give it that look of a hot air balloon it's gonna make sense in a few seconds you'll see in a few minutes so I have here I did find a few jump rings they're kinda thick but what I'm doing is inserting the jump ring into the hole and then the edge of the chain to the same jump ring and that will create the connection that I need close the jump ring I actually stole those pliers from my husband I need to get that jewelry kind and then I'm cutting the chain so one is ready and then go ahead and do the other three and just remember that all the chains need to be in the same length because we want the basket when it hangs we want it to be straight so just make sure you measure it properly and then you cut the chains they're all the same length okay so I'm gonna do number four now 
threading it through the jump ring there. This chain is very small, so the loops are very small, so it takes a while to thread them through. Okay, I'm just making sure that it's all in the same length. Okay, so now we have all our four chains and we need to connect them now to that wire ring that is going to go around the ball. So first let me just attach a jump ring to the edge of the chain, the other edge of course, the one that is not connected to the basket. And then we'll be able, this is the ring, I just took a wire and looped it around the ball like this twice and then closed it. That's it. So we are going to attach the chain to this large ring with a jump ring. Hope that makes sense. So I'm going to open the little ring now. It's too small to hold in with my hands so I'm using another plier to hold it and then you're going to attach the ring and the large wire circle or ring or whatever you want to call it and then close the jump ring so they'll be attached and you need to do this with all four chains and this is how the basket is going to be hanged from our hot air balloon make sure to close the jump ring really well so nothing will fall. See, we're going to do it like this and then it will hang down. So I'm going to do the same thing with all the other rings, but first this ring is slightly sm too small, so what I'm going to do is just enlarge it a little bit. So I'm opening it, opening it up making sure it's the right size this time. When you measure it, make sure you reach the center of the ball. This is the largest point of the ball and it should be that size because this is where the large ring is going to sit. So I'm just looping it around and closing the ring like this. It's not completely straight, but don't worry about that. Okay, so I have attached all four chains to my large ring and now you can see I'm hanging the, ri the ring on the ball and you can really see how this looks like a hot air balloon. Okay, so what I want to do next is create faux leather strips to go around the ball and because it's supposed to be remember fabric so I'm using again Tim Holtz paper it's just looks like leather a bit so I'm cutting two strips they are 12 inches by uh, half an inch you can do it three-eighths of an inch depending how wide you want them to be and use a diamond glaze to create little uh, droplets or balls or whatever you want to call them on the um, paper strip and then we're going to leave it to dry and we're going to make them look like rivets so the diamond glaze is not going to move. It's going to stay in this shape and looks and it's going to look like a rivet. So that's a really cool technique that you can use. So you leave that aside to dry. And I have here some metal embellishments that I want to add to my ball. 
I'm going to add one on each side altogether four sides and I'm using a hot glue gun because this is like the best and the strongest for the metal but before that I want to use this metal disc and then put this thing on it basically most of these things are from the hardware store so they probably have names but I have no idea what they're called basically on one side I'll put like a propeller that will look like a propeller of like an airship or something like a zeppelin and I'm putting a key on one side hope it's gonna stand there okay and then another metal disc and then I can add my propeller too this is going to be only on one side of the propeller because it needs to push the entire um, hot air balloon right this is what will help him help it move along to where you want to go okay so this is going to be the side of my propeller and those four things embellishments are also going to hold that large ring with the basket so the key fell like I thought it would I think I might need to add something stronger there so this is my propeller this is actually a chipboard that I sprayed with some sprays okay so back to our strips now of paper the diamond glaze has already dried up and I'm going over those paper strips with some distress ink black one and walnut make it a little bit darker and you can also already see how beautiful those diamond glazed dots look they do look like rivets I, at least I think so so those dots we are going to go over them with some Inca gold just to make them pop a little bit more and you can now really see them look great right it does look like faux leather like you put real rivets in it a little bit more ink and I think we are ready and I'm just going to glue those strips to my ball with just glue this is my ball there okay so they're gonna go in between those embellishments that I have created and remember that you know you have that little um, plastic or glass ring at the top of your ornament because you need to hang it on the tree right so this is going to just remember when you're designing the hot air balloon when you're working on your plastic or glass ball that this is the top okay because if you want to hang it somewhere then you have to leave this on the top and then attach a fishing wire or a string or some sort or something like that and then it will have the full effect of a hot air balloon because it's going to be in the air so I'm attaching the second strip now starting it from the top going all around and back to the top again and okay making sure it's nice and secure just gonna go over it a little bit more with some ink and finally what we need to do is embellish our um, basket a little bit with some more um, metal embellishments and I have here washi tape that has cogwheels on it 
going to put it around the basket. Actually, I'm just going to go over like this without cutting it all around. And then add a few metal pieces just to finish the look. So it will really look steampunky. A few more embellishments here and there. Adding this cogwheel and some more metal stuff. washers and all kinds of things whatever you have in your stash will be fine whatever you find in the hardware store is going to look great too just add a few things to the side so it won't look you know so it will look more of a steampunk look another chipboard piece and I think I want to add this, this zipper here and I think we are done this is how it looks from the side it's a little bit hard to see because when I hold it up you can't see but I'm gonna take a photo of it hanging and show you this is how it looks when it's hanging I've tied it to my camera tripod so this is our steampunk hot air balloon thank you very much for joining me i hope you really like it i love this project uh, if you did like it please give it a thumbs up and subscribe to my channel if you haven't done so great projects and inspiration here make sure to also visit my website anutkessler.com you'll have a link at the end of the video you can find online classes there, a lot of tips and inspiration about maximizing your supplies, project ideas, all kinds of uh, projects and tips, and lots of creative information there. Uh, thank you very much for watching, and I'll see you all next time.